and she could turn. Got your bank account in a queue. She can make a count. How about you? How are you going, guys? Luke here. Long time since I've featured on this channel. Although I haven't been on the channel, I'm still editing the videos. Um, I'm taking photos of Jay's artwork and I'm handling all his prints. I do his TikToks and everything. Look, without me, there's no Jay, pretty much. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, I thought I'd take the opportunity to explain if anyone is interested or anyone that may be interested outside of this audience of how I actually take photos of Jay's artwork. When I first started, there was a lot of things I was doing wrong and I didn't know what to do. So this is just to explain how to do it. So these are all the steps and tricks I learned throughout the way in which I believe will achieve the best result. Some people may have another way, but this is my way. And I am still learning, but I'm, I've nearly got it down pat. So let's get to a start. So I purchased these lights off Amazon. They're pretty cheap, the whole setup. Um, I'll have them facing each other and I'll put the artwork down. Now, what I was doing wrong when I first started was I was shining the light directly on the painting. And with this canvas, it causes a harsh reflection which you can fix in post-production, but you want to limit as much post-production as possible because you don't want to tamper with the artwork too greatly. You want it to look as natural as possible. So an important step is to have a tripod. Having a tripod will guarantee there will be no motion blur or any blur at all in the image and is crisp and sharp. I also set the timer on my camera to two seconds and I also have a remote so I don't even have to touch a camera. Now obviously you don't need a remote. You can do the two second timer or 10 second timer if you need, but I just find it's more handy and practical. The camera that I use is a Canon 5D Mark III. Now having a great DSLR is not essential. You can have a cheaper DSLR. Some people even take it on their iPhones. I wouldn't really recommend that just because DSLRs you have a lot more customizable features. A DSLR compared to an iPhone is like driving a manual car. You have full control over it. The car doesn't drive you, you drive the car. Same principle applies with the DSLR. Having said that, if you can't afford a DSLR, an iPhone or a phone is fine to start with. But I would recommend investing in a DSLR just to guarantee the best results possible. Before I shoot the photo, I also try to get the vertical and horizontal lines as straight as possible. This photo is not the best example because as I was doing the post editing, I noticed that it wasn't that straight, but it's fixable in Photoshop. You want those vertical and horizontal lines as straight as possible just to limit any distortion and just give the true visual of how the painting was intended to look. So I'll take one or two photos, sometimes three, and then in post-production, I'll go through them and see which one looks the best. I do underexpose most times just because the blacks in the painting pick up a lot of like the canvas texture. It gives this really rough texture to the painting. So when I'm happy with it, I'll load it into Lightroom. I always load into Lightroom first so you can seamlessly transition them from Photoshop back to Lightroom. It just makes it a lot easier. See, there's one or two for every photo. This is where I noticed the bottom was straight, the horizontal line, but the top was not. So this is where I crop it. I make sure every corner is in the rectangle crop. And this is where the magic happens. Select distort. This way you can push the edges to make it all squared. So after I've done a rough little distortion, I'll zoom in just so there's no edges of the canvas showing. And when I'm happy with that, I'll save it and it'll import back into Lightroom. Guys, I'm a bit shattered. As I was talking for the last five minutes, the memory card ran out of space. So I was just talking to myself for five minutes. So anyway, back to it. So then I'll import it back into Lightroom and I'll do the color correction because straight out of the camera, it doesn't look as accurate as it does in real life. Now I already have some presets of how Jay likes the photos edited. And once I'm happy with it, I'll save it. Now here's just more examples of the process that I do with other paintings. I actually took these photos about a year and a half ago and funnily enough, I'm actually wearing the same shorts as I was that day. What can I say? I just really like those shorts. Now I've got a bit of Jay painting. He gives Marilyn Monroe a cheeky spank on the ass. He wishes she was real right now. And here's another setup situation that I have. Both lights on either side, not shining directly on the painting as you don't want any harsh highlights and you don't want any areas overexposed on the painting. All the lights off in the house are also shut off. Just so I'm fully controlling the lighting of these two light sources. So you want a nice smooth neutral exposure. 
And now this is the fun part, the printing part, which also happens to give me the most stress. I can't tell you how much ink and paper I've wasted just off misprints and just screwing up. And the ink and papers for this printer are so expensive. I can't even tell you how much I've spent, but it's all trial and error. The more I stuff up, the more I learn. So that's good in a way. And what a feeling it is when they come out nice and smooth and clean, ready for shipping. Look at that. Now that is a square crop. That is why a bit of paper on the end has no ink on it. This painting was a square, so a bit of paper does go to waste. Actually, it doesn't go to waste. I keep the loose bits of paper. Just if I ever need anything like little cards, I'll keep the paper and then I'll cleanly slice it with the guillotine and it will be on its way. So guys, that is how I take photos of Jay's artwork. It is a bit of a timely, meticulous method, but it is how I achieve the best results and the cleanest images. Other people put the artwork on a flat wall. Whatever is comfortable for you, you figure it out, have a go and do it your way and you'll get better and better and better. All right guys, this is my contribution on the channel. I've missed you all and it's good to be back uploading regularly and I hope you all have a great day. All right, that's enough for me. Bye-bye.